these would be categorized into these four. So text is the form of content, then graphics is another. Then audio content is something that's been coming up with all these apps that you would know, uh, like this one that uh, just came up. Exactly, you are going to tell us in today's topic. Yeah, let me just pull up the presentation. This is visible now. Yeah, it's not being. Yeah, it's visible now. Got it. Cool. Okay, so I think while I'm presenting, I can't see anyone's faces there. Well, that's gonna be a bit of an issue. Nandre, so I think I'll just start with it for the people that are there already. So hi, I'm Deepak Nandra, and I'm had some experience with content I would say. And previously I've worked with an organization called Josh Talks, which if you're in India you might have heard of. So it creates inspirational content for YouTube. And this year it reached somewhere around 1 billion views on its videos, which majorly covers monologues of life stories of individuals from all walks of life and particularly video content in vernacular formats uh, for people to kind of you know relate to about life stories of how people reached a certain point in life. So for them, I handle their research, their branding, their personal branding and content for social media and otherwise. Uh, then moved on to, so that was a media house. Then I moved on to a development sector consultancy, which deals with organizations such as UNICEF, IBM and the likes of uh, these development sector NGOs as well and international philanthropists and funding organizations uh, like American India Foundation. So for them also, I was handling their content for events as well as for their social media presence, as for the brand itself, and for the project that came along. And along from that, uh, like after that, so from a media background to, uh, I would say a development sector background is what I moved to. And currently I've switched to another one in the development sector itself, uh, which currently caters to similar sort of, uh, I would say companies. So majorly UNICEF is the current partner, UNICEF Maharashtra is what they're working with alongside also looking at other projects from organizations uh, in the similar fields. So majorly today, what we're going to talk about, so all through this professional experience of mine, the major thing that's been there on the background or the backdrop of all of it has been just content. So a lot of work that I put in, a lot of things that I've created and worked around with people, be it graphic designers or video editors, or just the brands or the people uh, in the company itself, even the founders majorly is around content and how to use that content effectively to communicate a what the brand is about b the story of the organization and c to build meaningful relations partnerships and tangible things out of content that go beyond just the perspective of getting likes and comments or reshares or something like that so today that is majorly what we're going to talk about and first i just would like to thank shivani for having me today thank you so much for having me shivani i know if you guys uh, uh, have had a chance to look at their project also, Eddie Roots. They're also doing great stuff. And I think I'll just begin with the presentation. So should I go ahead, Shivani? Yes, definitely. Great. Okay. So, uh, uh, and we can just like open it up too. So it'll be more or less like 15, 20, or even 40 minute uh, sort of a run around content and how it's created, what are the different formats that you can explore. And towards the end of it, I'll just like stop the screen sharing and we can probably have a QA. and a And I'll really uh, like if you would have any questions that we can just walk through and then explore further. So to begin with, so the basic reason that uh, why any organization creates content can be covered into these six, but there might be a lot of other formats that you might be exploring for the reason that you are creating content for. So to begin for, uh, begin with so knowledge resource is what a lot of organizations so the i would say inception of content in today's day and age has been from where it was before where it was just supposed to be a blog for a website so that is the inception from where content actually began to now uh, to the current time where we are in where content is just everywhere and every platform that you're uh, seeing every organization is engaging with the content has to be created on a regular basis for those platforms. So the base of a lot of content in the website days was to be a knowledge resource so that a lot of clicks would flow through to your website. A lot of people would get to know you. A lot of people would come to you and you would be the go-to person or a brand or an institution uh, for the people to say if they want to know about shoes. So you're a website that would cater 
to the knowledge or the questions or anything that related to shoes and same goes for sports and other sorts of things so that has trickled down to brands now figuring out content based on a single most entity that they would want to associate with and then building it further from there uh, as a content strategy if you would want to call that so same goes for uh, brands like nike so nike goes for sports as the crux or the knowledge resource that it would want to create a lot of content around and from there on so that uh, being a knowledge resource for sports is what nike is about and then the content strategy flows from there where it just you know creates content around sportsmen uh footwear or other merchandise that are related to sports in any manner and any way and linking eventually everything back to sports so that's how it's just creating its own knowledge expertise i would say in the domain of sports and same goes for a lot of organization who just figure out that you know uh, so a lot of i would say uh thinking about creating content has to begin from what you as a brand or an organization or an individual stand for so figure out what your brand is about and then once you figure that out you will be having a bunch of keywords around which you can just you know uh explore further and that is when you can just figure out that one basic expertise that it all trickles down to so for so say for nike it sport it comes to sports for something like apple it comes to a uh, majorly user experience through all these uh, appliances or gadgets that they create or even experiences that they've gone on to create around user experience that is their core competency that is there then again uh, content also serves as the core for branding activities that happen for any brand itself as an organization and that is where your mission vision or uh, the core competencies as a brand that you would want to pursue and put out there for others to know that what is your brand about uh, what is the work that you're doing around so that is where you can just pull out a lot of content from so your basic vision mission statements is what can give you a lot of content then uh, talking about another aspect of branding where apart from the organization you would want to focus on the individuals who are associated with the brand itself so these would be the founders or even the employees for that matter so that's something called talent branding that's come up recently but before that if we talk about personal branding so that is where even i worked on a bit with the previous organization jo stocks where the founders brand was to be created around the expertise of hers in women led entrepreneurship as well as uh, in the media domain so we had to figure out how to get probably you know these speaking engagements for them uh, probably creating these small uh, social media handles where she could uh, on a continuous basis share those resources and going back to the knowledge resource bit of it where she as an individual or as a personal brand would figure out what her expertise is where does her and you know strengths lie and then putting it out there in the form of content so as to build this personal brand in the social media formats where she would put uh, push tweets the tweet chats would happen the instagram uh, posting would happen and all of that just to build a brand around an expertise that again kind of ties her down to the brand also so that's another aspect that you can look at while creating content so these are three so knowledge resource is one branding itself is one and personal branding trickling down from the branding aspect of it then expertise like again for knowledge resource so knowledge resource would be where you would not explicitly know in detail about anything but then again you pull out a lot of content around the same thing so as to make it look like uh, that you have expertise in it so even if you say uh, not ex- not an expert on shoes then again you create a lot of blogs on uh, what are the best shoes to walk walk in what are the best shoes for sports what are the best uh, colors or the palettes for the season so those sort of content would make you a knowledge resource but for you to be an expert is when you have to have i would say a professional education in that domain or a really deep rooted interest in that field that is where the expertise would come in and that's again linked to personal brand in a manner that as an individual you will be the one uh, go to resource person for that expertise or that domain and that is something that you can leverage on while creating content where you can use your personal brand alongside that expertise to create content for the brand itself there on adding to the knowledge resource that is there and then uh, the other aspect of uh, why would you want to create content could be just around presentation where 
there's nothing much to uh, what the expertise is there's not too much thought that been put into the branding aspects of it or the individuals running it are not that comfortable putting their faces out there or talking about their strengths their expertise and knowledge resources so there the content could be majorly created around just a presentation scheme where uh, it just showcases these are the products this is what we do this is the feature of it this is you know the ins and outs of it this is why we started it or just a few story lines for the sake of presentation to just have that facade on social media so that people could just know what you're about and while all of these are basics of why you could and where and how the inception of content can begin for you as a company or an individual but apart from these also there would be other uh, things that you can look on and then uh, going ahead on to the next aspect of it would be the types of content that you would want to create and majorly these would be categorized into these four so text is the form of content then graphics is another and then audio content is something that's been coming up with all these apps that you would know uh, like this one that uh, just came up i'm just forgetting the name so it is about those rooms where uh, the people can join in on an audio call with other individuals and through that they can you know so a lot of influences were also added to that and the last format would be video content which came on uh, and had a lot of hype around last to last year and me around that time was working with i around that time was working with joestock so we had a lot of vernacular content so we started from uh, content in english and then we saw a spike happening in content in the regional languages way more than the ones being created for the english audiences so that is where the boom kind of started in 2018 around that time so these are the four basic formats and then now we can just elaborate on to the various aspects and various other formats under these uh, types of i would say content pieces that you can create so the first one being text so text uh, like we discussed in the very beginning so the day and age when the websites were the major i would say front end where the people could see the content for a brand or an institution so a lot of things were put out in the format of blog on an article where they would talk about a certain thing in and to an extent that it has evolved from a really lengthy 2000 word article to then going into a format where the pointers were something that people started considering because that was what people wanted to do and to the current present time where people do not want to read too much and that is where you need to ideate on formats of content uh, majorly in the text format where they are shorter so 400 so somewhere around 250 to 400 words is what ideally articles look like uh, for a lot of organizations except from like the ones who are still into those uh, you know ideas of putting the most research thing out there so like the new york times still does that so it still publishes a lot of lengthy articles but then again the whole audience is the target audience is different so then again depending on your target audiences if you're targeting millennials or you know the baby boomers so they won't be interested into that in depth of an article they just want to know a bit of a, uh, about that concept so that is why it will be a great idea to keep the content minimal to so the text length could be uh, around 250 to 400 words and then again putting a lot of links would cut down on a lot of uh, textual information that you're putting out there in terms of explanation so that could also work in terms of cutting down and you know uh, snipping on the content uh, length then also what you can explore is bullet points definitely they work and the bestest of formats where you can explore is where you merge the text as a piece of content alongside graphic and create these visual identities or uh, which are these infographics that do have a lot of text but then again are kind of digestible for the current audiences that would want to view it if in case it is too detailed of an information that they need to look at so say 50 individuals in the uh, tech space or you know their journeys or whatever not so instead of a say four or five page article it just could be an infographic that they could look at so that could be the easiest format for them to look at so that is how the formats have evolved and that is how uh, from a lengthy blog to a more i would say inferential blog format is what has it come to right now and currently and then coming to other formats where the text 
uh, form of content is being used is the copy. So copy is basically the text that goes alongside any graphic or any post or banner that goes on your social media handles, which also you would know when you're posting anything on Instagram. There's this text that you need to add occasionally, which you add alongside. Uh, so those posts. So that is there for all the formats of uh, social media handles that they're there. And again, this copy could also be further uh, elaborated into various aspects that could be there. So the first one could be description, but uh, kind of elaborates on what is in the image or the graphic or the video that we put alongside that text. So what does it contain or a totally abstract definition of whatever it kind of relates to as a concept. Then there has to be a strong call to action where uh, it could be a link or say a uh, number or a fact that the person can look at in case it's not something that you're selling or a link to a shop if that's what you want them to kind of get redirected to and then again the other aspect of this text copy would be the hashtag that you're using with it so tweet deck had been a great tool for a lot of twitter users to figure out those trending hashtags all the twitter does show the trending thing there so for twitter you can search there for instagram again the algorithm allows you to kind of search for and look for the trending hashtag to use in your post so that is why a lot of thought needs to be put into these three at least so the description would actually help a person know what you're about and the shorter the better but then again if you're something of a page like the humans of bombay then the image would not uh, necessarily explain a lot then the story kind of needs to come alongside it that is where a lengthy kind of uh, content could work for you if you're into storytelling more than just product selling uh, for that matter then the link, uh, the call to action, again, depends on a product or a service or just a uh, individual, just uh, kind of, you know, putting any link out there that they can refer to for a future reference or for the reading of that concept. And then the hashtags, again, you can just research on these platforms. So there are uh, things like Hootsuite that you can use to figure out the trending hashtag, relevant hashtags for your company organization. But then again, uh, as an individual, you can, on an individual basis without paying for these uh, services on Hootsuite and Pubder or those sorts, you can still look for on the platform itself where, like I said, Twitter provides the trending hashtags. Instagram search can provide you the same thing uh, for the Facebook thing. Also, that happens. But then again, you can also look at the competitors that what hashtags they're using. So probably they're paying for a paid uh, sort of a version of Hootsuite. Uh, and that gives them some ideas on to which hashtags are trending and which ones would be relevant for their piece of content. So in case you are in a similar domain of work, uh, is where you can take inference from them as well. And the last piece of content in the text copy is uh, tagging. So necessary to get into the networks of individuals. So tag tagging uh, is basically beneficial if you're able to tag some influencers or individuals who would further reshare, cross share, cross post, comment, like, or you know share the piece of content that you've already put out. So it is kind of an extension to the call to action. Uh, so as for them to necessarily necessarily engage into it and then also for you to get an access into their networks. And lastly, uh, the different uh, formats where the text kind of, you know, merges with other formats is where it comes in form of a graphic or a video or otherwise is what you can look at. And then moving on to graphics uh, is what the whole social media space is more or less about and with these uh, the static graphics is what we all are uh, used to seeing on these uh, platforms like facebook instagram uh, linkedin and twitter but the other formats that you can look at is where you explore things like gifs so gif is what uh, could be called a graphic but with say two or three second repetition that happens on the rendition of the visual uh, you know appeal that is there so even if you see here the whole and sort of thing is just moving around. So that's a GIF for you. And then a motion graphic is an extension of the GIF to a format where the text uh, has some animation for a longer period of time, say, but then again, under uh, 20 to 15 to 20 seconds. And the text still kind of tell the story alongside the motion that happens on the text. And this is the formats for the graphics that you could explore uh, majorly the static graphics is what a lot of people are used to using and doing because then again they're interactive as is as is and for you to explore further onto these basic domains uh, that we discussed in terms of graphics these are the following elements that you can further explore onto making your 
graphics more interactive for the user as well as to give them an aesthetic appeal where the people would want to view them would want to engage with them or probably want to even reshare or cross share so the first one to uh, be discussed around graphics would be typography so basically uh, in a layman language that will just translate into the font that you're using for your graphics but then again if you uh, delve deeper into it uh, you can also look at creating your own typography your own font style where you come up with the whole uh, series of fonts which necessarily could not be abcd but then again your rendition of abcd that is something exclusive to your brand your identity and then you could be the only one using it but then again there are a lot of free formats free typography uh, available on google so google explicitly also has a service that provides free fonts so you can also google that and you'll come across that the second part of uh, the graphics is the imagery so for platforms like instagram a lot of uh, graphics cannot have a lot of text for that is what people see more of as an advertisement or something not to engage with because it might just as well be something uh, which the photography app is necessarily not built for so the algorithm also organically does not push a lot of content that has text on it so imagery is what you would want to necessarily look on instagram as a format where your content is just a graphic just an image i would say and here what you can look at is to try different uh, filters onto it uh, putting it in black and white is what a lot of individuals and organizations use these days from development sector to corporates to otherwise because that just takes away a lot of uh, i would say distractions from the image itself and also adds a bit of a character to it where even if uh, there's not much being said or done or being seen there but it just adds a layer of drama to the whole image as is but then again that being said you could also just look for a monochrome color or a monochrome filter that works for you and just explore that in terms of images or just use other filters that kind of you feel kind of put your style or vision out there the third one to look out for in graphics is the color palette so if you're a brand or an organization uh, looking to you know put your graphics as a piece of content out there color palette and again the branding uh, which is the fifth point uh, so combining those two together is what you need to uh, kind of establish at the very beginning before deciding on what your content would be there so once you've decided on the expertise of your organization then having built a content strategy around that expertise you need to look for these branding aspects of it before your content can finally flow through all of it and be put on the social media handle so as for all of it to make sense as a whole and even individually for them to stand for something that your brand is and this is where the likes of unicef or say british council or even ibm creates their own branding templates where the colors are defined so not more than say these five uh, colors is what you can use on a graphic or this is the font uh, style that is necessarily to be put on every graphic so helvetica is the preferred font for a lot of these organizations uh, it being simple and the variants kind of being easy to use but then again a lot of organization do create their own fonts and typography to be used for their graphics specifically so that is again what you can look for as a company but then again suggested would be that you go for the free fonts so that's just easier to begin with so apart from defining the colors uh, the fonts the use of the brand logo itself or the taglines or the call to action in terms of the social media handles or the website being put on the graphic is what you need to also decide that would every graphic have, have it or would just a specific set of graphics have it where uh, you also explain that would the logo be on the top right top left or you know center aligned or would it have to have inverse formats where a lot of organization creates uh, so there would be a logo where uh, it is in a colored variant but a lot of organization also do create a black and white variant of it where in on a graphic that has a lot of color already on it the colored logo does not uh you know come through it does is it's not visible so necessarily what these organizations do is that they create an inverse sort of a logo where it just is in a totally white or a totally black format so as to stand out on that colorful graphic 
So that is again what you can look at in terms of the brand logos and that basic branding to be put out there. And then the website is what you can just put out there. So if it's just an introduction to an organization that's into selling products or as a personal brand that you're putting out there. So it'll be helpful if you with every graphic that you put out there, there's a small uh, you know byline to it or a small line towards the end of it on every graphic that just uh, has the website name on it. So in case the person is not reading the text or the copy alongside it, they can at least refer to the graphic for that information of, you know, uh, that this is a website probably where you can figure out more about that person or the brand. Then another thing that you need to look for in a graphic is the flow and the structure. So definitely a lot of uh, work has been done on the flow and structure from where the graphics were previously to where they are currently. So previously they had like a lot of things being put together. So there will be a lot of font, there will be a lot of images. Instead of just one, there'll be a lot of text onto it, details, uh, websites, logos, and a lot of things that would make it too heavy for any individual to figure out even if, you know, if, is it like an informational thing or just like an advertorial of sorts. To now uh, where a lot of uh, individuals and organizations are creating these graphics which have kind of a minimal appeal to so, so to say and uh, just one image or just an image with a one-liner because that is what a lot of individuals as users who are viewing your content as a piece of uh, you know content on their news feeds or timelines would like to view and would like to interact with because that is clutter free that is easy to understand and kind of you know, something that they would want to share as a thing that they stand by. Because these users that you're targeting or sharing your content with as individuals, they also think of themselves as, you know, these small brands in themselves where they would not want to associate or reshare or cross post any sort of content which does not stand by their aesthetic, their value systems and beliefs where you know uh, so i would not share something with my friend that has like a lot of cluttered information onto it because that just uh, puts my personal thing in a really bad color where the friend might not like me sharing those sort of posts and might as well block me so that is also what you need to think of that if your content is supposed to be share worthy it needs to be simple and if the users for them to engage with it it needs to be interactive enough for them to stand by that content uh, another thing to look at uh, would be the messaging of it. So like I mentioned, so the text as minimal as it could go is what a lot of advertising agencies also do in terms of the graphic or the holding works. So these are the, I would say, digital holdings or the virtual space. So that is why you need to use the space as judiciously as possible and keep the messaging to the minimal so that it's not too much for a person to understand it's not too little for them not to get any idea of it but just enough for them to know what the concept is about and then for them also to keep their own uh, ideas of it open where they could also bring in their own interpretation to it as a piece of content and that's the best sort of engagement that you can explore for then relevance is again something related to uh, the target audiences so if you're dealing with millennials then you'll have to have those uh, basics right that millennials follow in terms of the i would say the stars or uh, the lingo the language that you're using on the graphic the messaging the way it is the way things are put there if you're using abbreviations it's something that they can relate if you're using images it's something that they can relate to not making it too cluttered for someone who's in their 19 or you know teens uh, would not want to look at a content which is too informational rather they'll want to look at a minimal sort of a piece of content so the relevance would depend on either the target audiences that you're trying to serve or the kind of product that you're trying to sell as compared to the competitors as to you know what sort of content is already out there and would it be relevant for you to kind of you know go for the same flow or change your piece of content as a graphic then platform specific uh, content is what we probably talked about where instagram you just keep the text as minimal as possible linkedin is where a lot of people would want to read and a lot of readers would come on so having an illustration or a detailed graphic would make sense for that sort of an audience facebook again uh, the minimal text is what the algorithm prefers twitter is where the graphic might not have uh, that much of an engagement unless it's sort of a meme or something that puts a lot of things into perspective. And then again, you just explore what every platform 
has in abundance in your domain and then how you would want to put your messaging out there is what you need to look at for your content to actually stand out and then the engagement is what would define a lot of these things that we've already discussed so if people are not engaging with your content because of the imagery because of uh, the relevance or the platform or the messaging is when you'll have to rethink on your whole uh, focus of creating graphics by you creating those how you creating those and who's interacting with them and if they're engaging with them resharing commenting on it why are they commenting on just a specific set of graphics and not all of your graphics so that will help you identify and grow your audiences as well as improve your graf graphics over time and your messaging as well so these are some of the elements around graphics specifically and then comes the audio uh, as a piece of content so with podcast coming up uh, with gary vayner as he's put it and he's invested in a lot of uh, these podcast companies and he's also come up with his own things uh, so podcast got a recent boost and a lot of people have started creating their own podcast which basically is a sort of a format where just the audio is recorded and the people can listen to it while on the go without having to view the piece of content which is great if it's an audiobook so audiobook is similar like a piece of audio content uh, which is engaging for those audiences who are traveling by train or, and would not want to read through a book because of the you know movement that's happening and would not even want to look at something digitally because then again uh, it's not that comfortable so audio is kind of filling that gap for a lot of individuals always on the move but still want to engage with content uh, through listening and that is where a lot of podcasts have come up and then another piece of content around the audio format is where the music and the composition happens for a lot of videos a lot of uh, content that's already flows out there is this certain aspect of composition so if, if you see a movie there's uh, nothing actually to enjoy without the sounds or the composition that's being added to every scene or you know every thing that takes place in that movie so that that is where the composition the whole i would say audio aspect of it comes into play to get more engagement into it so then again coming to the i would say most elaborate piece of content uh, which all of this kind of you know links to and comes uh, together as one would be a video format where uh, you know recently it's boomed because youtube again uh, offers you the space where you can create these videos for free you can upload as many as there are and a lot of people having had apart from youtube the freedom to create small video bits of content is where it is actually boomed through tiktok i would say uh, majorly where people would able to create these professional sort of videos on topics and expertise again going back to the expertise bit of it where they as a brand would stand for something create content around it and people would actually enjoy it and having that format being provided by tiktok is what kind of you know actually blew it out of the water and now for video content specifically there also has to be formats that you can follow so interviews is what a lot of organization and individual uh, do so uh, interview as a piece of content in the video format allows you to actually partner with new organizations open up uh, i would say first level of conversation with brands and organization that you would want to eventually work with so you could invite the ceo over or you could invite any person from a particular domain in that company so as to open a channel of conversation build a reputation and then eventually get you business also so that is where the interview as a format of content in the video uh, i would say format is what you can look at and another thing where as an individual uh, the as the one taking the interview is what you're also working on creating is a personal brand so that is where the personal branding of it comes into play where you as the host or you as the curator of the whole interview series is what's building a brand around an expertise so uh, there's these individuals who are creating interviews around marketing to so as to establish their personal brand in marketing as the go-to person for marketing there are individuals creating pieces of content around uh, interviews around you know interviewing these film stars or individuals from the media industry basically creating their experience or personal brand as the go-to person for any uh, you know knowledge about the media industry <clears throat> 
So that is where uh, the interview format can also work wonders for your brand, your organization, as well as for your personal brand to can you take you to the next level and also open up conversation. So this is the most, I would say, tangible format of content that you can create for yourself to bring in real business in the real sense. Then again, advertisements and branding videos is what a lot of organizations are used to creating with the advertising agencies that are already into place. Uh, but then again, now with the freedom of, uh, I would say, these softwares or online platforms where you can create those videos for free and would not have to necessarily depend on an advertising agency to create it for you is where it's already uh, taken off a lot where now brands are creating videos on canva and that same video goes on to become viral and that is what you can as a brand look at as a format where you create your own advertisement videos you put yourself up there you create small narrative you create a small script around it you create a you know a whole story around what your brand is about how it is and then even if you go and search for the most viral videos they're actually not been the ones created by advertising agencies but necessarily by individuals just wanting to create a piece of content to explain what they do and how they do it so that is uh, i would say as a practice you can just start with uh, what you know and how you would want to want actually the user to see it and then if that works for you you're getting some traction out of it is when you consider on taking the professional help from or support from someone uh, then other formats that have recently come up are introductory videos or these explainer videos where uh, you have these steps or you know a one minute video where you'll just totally introduce your product through say uh, these cartoon films or animated animations or just text a lot of text coming up and explaining and elaborating on the concept so majorly these formats work when you're selling something as a product, as a service, and uh, that to a layman is something that needs to be elaborated on and explained through visual medium is the format of content that you can look at. Then slideshows as videos is what has evolved from, I would say, uh, PowerPoint presentations, where those presentations, so this is also a presentation like you're seeing right now, so created into a video format through Canva. So Canva also allows you to have these different slides as pieces of content. So that is necessarily what a video is. So it's just a series of say 10, 10, 10 second slides or frames or scenes uh, that necessarily add up to a lengthier format of one minute or two minutes or even an hour in a movie where a lot of these culmination of scenes end up being like the major feature film. So that is where the slideshow format has evolved from. And then today you can create these slideshow videos on Canva also offers you one. Then Adobe Spark is a great resource to create it for free. And that is uh, the best way actually for you to explore creating these introductory or explainer videos through these slideshow formats. Because then again, it's just a presentation with a few visual effects or animations that kind of put out an appearance of a well-created and curated video piece of content and other formats then obviously other viral themes that are going around that uh, you know someone's doing unboxing videos or someone's doing uh, reviews or you know reaction videos is what you can also look for as an individual if you're trying to create those video as pieces of content but then as a brand if you're looking to ride onto these waves of viral themes is when you'll have to actually think about that how does that fit into your larger vision so if you're a sports brand how can the theme of virality say around unboxing can be used for your brand where you create unboxing videos for your shoes or as a food uh, or an edible sort of a food company if you're there so how could you probably leverage onto the concept of reviewing and have people actually review your products on a video uh, and then use it as a piece of content for your brand so then again, the viral uh, themes will have to be, I would say, filtered through your brand vision and mission lens and then used for whatever reasons you would want it to be put out there. So as to get the best of engagement for your piece of content. And moving forward. Now we can talk about the platforms that uh, a lot of these pieces of content. So. Uh, be it text, be it graphics, be it video, or be it audio. Uh, the thing that it eventually reaches onto is the platform where it is being eventually used. So Facebook as a medium is not that great 
of an essence right now unless you are uh, dealing with say 30 plus year of age individuals or someone who is <clears throat> coming from a region where facebook is the only social media platform they're just using so that is where when your focus can actually just lie on facebook and creating content specifically for facebook for instagram uh, is when uh, you're into a product or a personal brand where you would want to showcase uh, you know it in different themes places and through just simple pictures is what you can put your content out there is when instagram would be the best medium for you <coughs> twitter on the other hand would be someone uh, where you can cut short your content into the smallest of pieces and then again have those i would say intellectual conversations with individuals that are already there on that platform which is necessarily about having conversations so if your piece of content can start conversation it can have people actually comment on and react to is when twitter would be and that is something that you would want for them to also do so say a piece of interview or a piece of uh, comment that happens or a graphic where it's kind of explaining some concept is what would be a best piece of content for Twitter. Then for YouTube, again, it's just the videos, the formats that we discussed right now. For LinkedIn, for the professional sort of audiences, it'll just be around the expertise that you're able to sell, the, sell to those people. And also what you as an individual or an organization can provide as services to those people would necessarily be your core piece of content that can go on that, those platform, the, on LinkedIn as a platform. And as for TikTok, again, it's just the virality of it is what you can leverage on because that's the major piece of, uh, you know, format that comes out of TikTok. Snapchat as a platform is about the realistic stories, how it is and the way you would want to put it. So although Instagram uh, in the very beginning was that, uh, you know, filling that void of brands, not actually reaching out to individuals in the true sense where on Instagram they could actually post those in office images or informal images uh, to now Snapchat having taken that role where those small videos can be put up by brands or small, you know, these 30, sec 20 second uh, videos or reels could be put out there. So reels again, Instagram is what they kind of picked up from TikTok, but then again, it's not gone that great for Snapchat has now become that go-to place for a lot of individuals and brands to put the more informal content out there. Then Jiffy is a place where you can actually create GIFs for yourself. But then again, as a platform is what it also can be used where you upload your GIFs onto the platform for other people to use it. And that's also a great place for you to get visibility for uh, if you're trying to put your product out there. So if you would have seen when you're trying to reply to any uh, message on WhatsApp also the GIFs that come up uh, if you search for them a lot of those come from a lot of popular shows and that is what a set of people have actually also looked at as a piece of content where they could also create their own series of GIFs and that could also give them a lot of representation for particular keywords or uh, you know series of things that they would want to be represented for so say being funny or being uh, too dramatic or whatever but then again that is something that you'll have to put a lot of thought before actually going into it. And similar is the format for Shutterstocks and stock images. So a lot of people also put up a lot of their images onto Shutterstock, working two way for them. One, bring the visibility for their images to be used by anyone for free or for paid format. And two, bring in the income that actually those stock images being sold on those platforms provide for you. And I think Twitter, again, I put once again so then again uh the other formats that you could use is whatsapp and telegram so these are the platforms that necessarily are about conversations so if you would want people to uh, share the messages the messages would have to be engaging they would have to have like a strict call to action where they probably have like a link to a group or a website is what you can put there or the video formats are something that go really viral really quick on whatsapp and telegram as formats where the best uh, proof of it going viral would be that once you send it out it just comes back to you through different channels and a lot of people sending it back to you as when it's in the reels and gone viral and then regional and vernacular uh, variants of those platforms is what you can also look for if you're in a different country or a different region that does not actually use say twitter so there's a hindi version for it that's called ku so you could also explore that to create content in that regional platform to get those regional individuals who as an audiences are there 
to interact with your or, you know product or service then mailers is another platform that you can use to float out your content although it just works for organizations for individuals not so much unless and until you can collate it into a more descriptive and a format where uh, you know just a few links like we discussed in the text formats with the blog or an article format where you have the scripts and short messaging out there that the person just needs to take two minutes or two seconds to look at and that is where a lot of formats have also uh, also actually evolved where people are now creating videos that are say 15 second interview so there's this guy who does 15 second interviews on instagram so basically he just asks a question then the person just answers and then the 15 second are over but then again as a format it is pretty interesting for a lot of individuals to use and then again a lot of other formats have flown out of the same uh, you know time limit or uh, time that an individual kind of wants to interact with a piece of content for so that is what you can explore and then These are the few things that you need to keep in your mind while you're actually creating content on a longer uh, time period or a longer time frame when you would actually want to invest a lot of time into it. So the first thing would be calendar and time where you create a formal calendar as a content strategy where you look at uh, the different dates where you could leverage onto these viral trends and waves and virality where say uh, on a mother's day you create a piece of content or because that comes every year or uh, uh, national holidays when you can create a piece of content but that only would happen when you have a calendar in place when you have a time frame and a content strategy into play and you would not have to you know just two days before the event think about creating something for it so that is how a lot of organizations approach it and are able to actually crack it where the whole timeline is set, the whole content strategy is put into place. And then as the trends happen, or even the virality of say a format that comes along or a meme or something around marketing that happens in the whole domain as such is what they're able to write on. Cause the content you'll have to understand works on different formats where you have a base content, which goes every once a while. So every day you say you're posting two or three posts just uh, say a single post about your product or service then there's this one post that is just uh, to keep the engagement out there and then the third post that could go out is basically about virality or a viral trend that's already there because then again these trends die as soon as they come up so as for you to leverage those you'll have to have those hygiene uh, pieces of content into place so as for you to scale up to a level where you could just create content on the spur of the moment that is when you'll be actually able to leverage onto these waves or trends or memes. And then consistency definitely is what a lot of individuals would also tell you is the key to creating long term content that create a lot of engagement and people are able to, you know, see and know that this is what you stand for. So <clears throat> even McDonald's for that matter, if you see that they're consistent with their advertising, even if they need not advertise anymore. So to a point where the graphics of the content that they're putting out there could also as well just be a blurred image of uh, the fries, but still people associated uh, with McDonald's. But the reason for that to happen is because they've been consistent with their pieces of content and their visual appeal that's been out through holdings to now social media platforms that they're putting it out there on. So consistency is what you will need to stick on to and then change definitely. Going back to the very first slide where we talked about engagement, if it's not engaging enough, if the people are not looking at it enough, then what you can look at is changing the format, changing the appeal of it, changing the look and feel of it, and also looking at some of the comments and the reviews and replies from the individuals who belong to your target audiences to improve your piece of content that you're putting out there. And uh, I think this would be the second last or last slide where uh, some of the tools that you can probably, you know, look at exploring could be canva as one grammarly definitely for the text uh, pieces of content adobe spark uh, allows you to create those videos in the slideshow formats as well as some basic editing can be done onto uh, you know videos and animation movies unsplash lets you have free images uh, so stock images if you cannot pay for shutterstock if you don't want to pay for shutterstock unsplash is your go-to thing then hootsuite lets you see the analytics for your platforms as to how your platforms are uh, working, how good are they performing, and then get to also know the analytics of the whole game that's being played around content that you're putting out. So as for you to improve on it. 
the local variants of it again would be something like Publer or like software that you can find. And if uh, and then there's Audacity that works for audio content. It lets you uh, as an open source soft sort of software edit the audio content, the interviews or <clears throat> the narrations that you have into smaller pieces of content. Uh, it's easy to use. Then SoundCloud is something to distribute that audio as a piece of content onto different platforms. It also lets you distribute it to Google uh, Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify as well. Anchor is, uh, as a platform, uh, actually was free to use a couple of months back, but now it's been bought by Spotify. So I really am not really sure about how that works right now. But then again, it can be used to create the podcast uh, format of content as an audio piece of content. Uh, Kickstarter is specifically for inspiration what you can look at. So a lot of these marketing pages or a lot of these uh, pages that are sharing content uh, around content uh, do refer to apps or websites like Kickstarter and Board Panda for that matter. If you go and visit these two, you'll get an idea of how the content is there and why Kickstarter again as a tool, it actually would give you a lot of inspiration on how to write a short story because the people putting their story or their products or their graphics on Kickstarter are the ones who are actually raising money for them to be able to make them a full grown product line or something as a brand. And if they're actually getting money for it, you will know that that piece of one liner or that graphic or that video, explain a video is working for them. And that is what you can take inspiration from. So if that format can raise money as it as well, uh, it as well as for you might as well also raise your engagement with individuals. Reddit again uh, gives you a lot of these uh, viral formats where the memes or the you know uh, these viral trends are there. The people uh, get to see, and then you can also explore them for them yourself. Jiffy again, you can look at the viral formats of GIFs and then explore it for yourself. Board Panda is a site that shares a lot of content. So a lot of these uh, I would say graphic visual articles that you see about say 10 things to uh, see in India or 20 uh, tech gadgets that you need to use. So that is a sort of uh, video or visual content that is there on board Panda, which a lot of marketing pages actually take a cue from and then actually shamelessly pull it off from this website. And another uh, tool that you can explore is Linktree that helps you specifically for Instagram where you cannot put link with every graphic. You could use Linktree to create one link that has multiple links embedded into it. So once the individual clicks on it, they get to see and explore, uh, say, 10 or 15 links. So whatever the free limit is, you could just have the people view it. Then there's this uh, another tool called Google Alerts, which helps you look at the uh, news formats for specific keywords or pieces of content, not necessarily for social media, but that's just floating around in terms of graphics or videos or news pieces on the web for a specific piece of keyword. And how you can use it is where you can, as an organization, have Google Alerts set for specific topics. So say if you're in the tech space or if you're in uh, the lifestyle space, you could have an alert set up for lifestyle where you get to uh, get onto your email, these blogs, uh, pieces of video, pieces of content on lifestyle, which then you can reshare. So instead of having to go through the timelines and go to pages and you know multiple websites, you get it all delivered onto your email, and that also the content. And I think uh, that's more or less uh, for my end. And these are the two individuals that you can definitely look onto. So Varundu Girala, uh, so that's his page. So he's an He's the CEO of an Indian advertising agency that named The Glitch, which is doing really good for itself. And this individual also creates a lot of podcasts as a format of content and has created his expertise around marketing as a personal brand for himself. So except from being the CEO of a preferable advertising agency, he's also created a personal brand for himself. So a lot to look onto this individual. And he's also using different formats from podcasts to even mailers he started now. Uh, to weekly meetups, which he's doing with individuals and people who would want to learn more about marketing and content. So that could also be your go-to space. And if you're really interested into looking at viral videos and actually the 
method behind the madness, then you might as well follow this individual named Ashish Chopra. He's also written a book recently, uh, Fast, Cheap and Viral, where he explains uh, whatever his idea is when creating a viral video. To give you a short example, so basically he uh, works as the content head for a travel uh, application and majorly what they did was focus on what their core expertise was then trickle it down to one aspect of it which was travel and then created endless content around travel so where some of the videos actually a lot of videos went viral on the formats that they created around travel as a theme so these formats uh, to exemplify was something like you know 10 things you can take from a hotel or 20 places to visit in maldives or uh, the best food in North India. So those sort of things which are related to travel as a theme, but then again are as a piece of content relatable for individuals who would want to share or even stand by that piece of content. I would want to share that with my friends and that is how a lot of his content has gone viral. And he's actually, you know, broken it down into a proper format where he explains how you can create viral videos, what it takes to create a viral video from engagement to uh, usage of your expertise and how to engage with your audiences and how to actually figure out if your content would go viral or not and uh, the best uh, possible thing was where he asked you to engage with your team members or your known group of people and network to engage with your piece of content as uh, soon as it goes online so as to give you that initial boost that a lot of organization and individuals do not have so if even your 10 friends kind of you know share it the possibility of it going beyond just your circle is way more than just you know you sharing it and no one actually commenting on it so that is what actively you can use and work for as a go-to thing for your pieces of content uh, rest you can figure out on his website and even for Varundu Girala's uh, website you can look at and that's more or less from my end i think we're already out of time but then again, you can connect with me on LinkedIn and that's my email ID. I'll just keep it for another two to three seconds. And then if you have any questions, I guess we can just take that now. All right. How can content marketing help address our target audience through the customer purchase journey? To the customer purchase journey, I would say then uh, you'll have to begin with not outrightly selling your product as a piece of content where a lot of organizations go wrong is where they just put out a picture of a product and expect the user to actually buy it where if you're actually creating a customer uh, journey around your uh, product is where you'll have to start from actually explaining why is of the product uh, to then having them reach the house of it so the way it could be done is where you explain that why is uh, you know sports important for individuals and then uh, probably how using your product is what they can get good at it. So where the user connects the dot is where they would want to feel, they would actually feel motivated to buy or interact with your product or a service that you're putting out there. So you'll have to think it from that angle as a user, not from just an outright angle of selling it. Okay. Uh, there is one question. How can we make something to make it viral? Uh, to make it viral, the basic uh, thing that you can do is actually follow the trends or the formats that are going already in that domain. So say like I already mentioned for Ashish Chopra, so the way he does it, the expertise is already established that travel is what they'll create content around. Now all they need to do is just look for formats and then, uh, you know, uh, how you can create content in that format. So say a format uh, which is going viral around reviewing Indian products. Uh, and you are creating video content uh, for your brand. And the best thing you do, that you could do is uh, review Indian uh, food or in places. And then that is the way you can ride onto that wave as well as create content for your brand and your expertise that ties onto you as well as uh, as a piece of content for your platform. And then again, there are other ways to go viral all the other food that uh, your content piece is informational so whereby an individual who sees it would want to reshare it, cross post it, actually want others to see it, others to know about it. And uh, it could also be something that's kind of, you know, interactive where the more they engage with it, the more they get to know about something. So taking the information a bit to another level where they get to know something new out of it. 
that they've already not uh, they've not actually been uh, you know uh, exposed to before. Yeah. Uh, one more question: How do we measure the effectiveness of content marketing? Uh, specifically, the easiest way to be uh, measuring that would be the engagement. That how many likes, comments, reshares, or you know, uh, is anyone actually seeing a piece of content and interacting with it? So the in engagement is what you can look up, look for to know that if it is working or not. Okay. And what are the best ways to build an audience with content? Uh, so that is again when you become this go-to place or uh, the go-to person for a specific set of information is when you'll build uh, loyal audiences around it. So say if I'm into marketing, I would want to uh, you know, stand for anything that's mar uh, related to marketing. And so say content or uh, graphics or even I could do something around branding, personal branding. So all of these fit into the format of uh, marketing and any individual who would be interested in marketing as a domain and the various aspects around it would want to follow me and interact with me to get to know more about it and that is how you create your uh, you know, loyal follower base based on your expertise and the way you are putting more content around your expertise or just building onto it so it's just as good as having you know uh, a known friend who knows everything on, around say sports so that is the one you will refer everyone to when you would want anyone uh, any questions coming for around sports or you have someone who cooks great food so that is the individual you will refer to every individual who would want to cook something so that is what you would want to create for yourself as a brand that you become the go-to place for everyone for that particular thing or a piece of content yeah uh, one more question how does marketing without talking about or promoting our product services help us to create leads and sales so the leads and sales uh, if you're not actually explicitly selling your products would i would say happen over a longer period of time where if you're not talking too much about your product you're just actually building your expertise and creating or establishing yourself as a knowledge resource out there we're talking too much about say again going back to the sports example that's all we have right now so uh that you know, the uh, the code and how to play code and these are the rules for it and everything that is related to sports is what you're talking about to so eventually so any suggestions also that you put out for products on uh, at a later stage is what the people would refer to you for so that is where a lot of influencers that is how they work so necessarily building their expertise around a piece of uh, a topic and eventually also suggesting individuals on to which products work best for them and if they would want to buy it they might as well use their coupon code or their personal code to buy it so that is how they are leveraging onto that uh, you know uh, product selling without explicitly selling it so to put it easily uh, you could just come across as a place which suggests product rather than sells it so that is what you would eventually want to become where your user base would know that if you're suggesting something it's coming from a place of knowledge and uh, benefit for the person who's actually using that suggestion yeah that's it uh, dear participants if you have any question you can unmute yourself and can ask directly Any other question? Cool. I think I'll just drop my email ID and if any one of you has any question or just want to talk about. So you can shoot me an email and we can probably connect over here. All right. Done. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you so much, Shimani, for having me. And hope it was a bit beneficial for everyone who joined in. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you.